Hey guys, when you hear standard English conventions, what do you think about? Shakespeare? Technical elements of language? Some common sayings in English? What standard English conventions actually means is the development, organization, and effective language necessary to make paragraphs and passages perfect. On the SAT, the three most important elements of these conventions are sentence structure, conventions of usage, and conventions of punctuation. These three areas are important because they are the base for conveying one's expression of ideas. In these first two lessons, we'll take a look at all the elements that make up sentence structure such as sentence boundaries, subordination and coordination, parallelism, modifier placement, inappropriate shifts in verb tense, mood, and voice, and inappropriate shifts in pronoun person and number. Okay, moving along. On the SAT, you'll have to recognize and correct sentence formation problems and piece together appropriate sentence construction after sentences and paragraphs have been linguistically mutilated. Under this category, we'll review six different types of sentence structure. Sentence boundaries is up first. So let's see why having boundaries is something of a necessity. Now have you ever shared a room with your brother or sister? Then you might know the need for boundaries. <laughs> okay. Sentence boundaries or sentence fragments is when a group of words doesn't state a complete thought. If you read any of the fragments in the first column, you would have no idea what or who the speaker is talking about. In order for the listener or reader to be fully clued in, it's important to make sure you've included all of your subjects and verbs. Sentences that lack proper boundaries can make it difficult to know where a sentence begins or ends. This can happen not only when subject or verbs are forgotten, but also when proper punctuation goes missing. Take this example, for instance. I need to pay my tuition, I don't have enough money. Versus, I need to pay my tuition, but I don't have enough money. See how with the addition of a comma and the word but, the sentence reads much more smoothly? Here's a true story how punctuation really does save lives. To coordinate is to bring things into balance. To subordinate is to make things less important. When we use coordinating conjunctions to combine independent clauses in a sentence, each clause is equal in importance. For example, Lauren ate candy, and Bobby hit the piñata. Neither Lauren's nor Bobby's activity is emphasized in this sentence. If we use a subordinating conjunction, however, it's different. Lauren ate candy after Bobby hit the piñata. When you have two independent clauses, many times they can be joined together using conjunctions, like and, after, but, for, so, and or. Using conjunctions teaches you to make writing less choppy and provide some information about when these activities have happened in relation to each other. It also does something so subtle you may not notice. It makes Lauren's activity 
the focus of the sentence. Now moving on to parallelism, also known as parallel structure, is the use of components in a sentence that are grammatically the same or similar in construction, sound, meaning, or meter. Examples of parallelism could look like this. Some popular pairs, like father, like son. Easy come, easy go. Being a doctor is better than being a lawyer. As tall as a tree. If you want to go to Harvard, you must study hard. A lot of times the SAT will kind of throw in you and one and mix the two, but remember to keep the pairs. You, you, one, one. And last but not least, first of all, second of all, more of a continuation there. And some popular triples, such as she likes eggs, bacon, sausage, and cheese. Or... I like wrapping, napping, and snacking. And sometimes it might be a pair of something, kind of like verbing the noun, or it could be in this situation, verbed the noun, past tense, verbed the noun, and verbed the noun, or lifted the sofa here. Okay, so beware of these types of faulty parallelisms, which also might look like this now, if we switch it up a little bit. I like wrapping, napping, and to snack, okay? To correct faulty parallelisms, you need to match nouns with nouns, verbs with verbs, and phrases or clauses with similarly constructed phrases or clauses. Here's another example you might come across. She lost her turtle, parakeet, and her mom wasn't listening to her. In this example, we see a verbal bait and switch. The reader expects another noun after turtle and parakeet and feels cheated when the last element is a clause instead. The corrected sentence should read, she lost her turtle and parakeet and her mom wasn't listening to her. Do you see how that sentence is a bit more fluent? and how you don't feel cheated out of that third missing lost article? Just how we don't want the SAT to cheat you out of getting a perfect score. Okay, let's take a break now before jumping back into the rest of the elements of sentence structure in our next lesson.